Tuesday night. Welcome aboard Between the Rolls is live. Thanks for joining us. This is going to be an Iron DM episode. We know how you guys like those because you guys are just like us, just regular people hanging out, chilling with less facial hair, maybe. Maybe with more. It's hard to say. I uh, don't know. Uh, but thank you very much for tuning in. We certainly appreciate it. And we'd really appreciate it if you followed us on Twitch, followed us on Twitter, took a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot the shit about D&D, uh, join our Discord. If you want to buy our cool crap, uh, phone case, throw pillow, shower curtain, duvet cover, shit like that, uh, the link is straight down below me, as a matter of fact. Uh, also, if you ever want to be on this show or on a one-shot, not this Saturday, because this Saturday is uh, Calamity, uh, but next Saturday is One Shot, uh, just hit us up at mhoboinc, Twitter, or Gmail, and uh, let us know that you're interested, and we'll get you on there. Uh, newcomers are usually pushed to the head of the list. Uh, also, if you're in the mood for some custom dice, and hell, who isn't, uh, go on over to Twitter and check out at Pirate Dog Dice. Uh, see if they have the time, the energy, or the inclination to uh, make you some. I mean, you know, if you're an ass, they'll probably just say no. Uh, and if your game stinks unlike ours, because ours smells like success, run on over to oddfishgames.com and check out their Adventure Sense. They have 60 uh, aromatic... I won't say pleasing because not all of them are pleasing. No, they're not all pleasing. They're not. <laughs> all right, Kyle. Uh, but uh, the sense really liven up the game, especially uh, when it is in person, which is what we seem to be getting back to. Uh, so, you know, there's that. They also make something called the Shine System. So if you want to be a writer like me, only gooder, check that out as well. That's oddfishgames.com. Okay, there we go. This is Between the Rolls Iron DM Edition. We're doing timelines tonight. Uh, first, let's introduce you to the cast uh, and uh, give them some uh, airtime. David, who are you? Hi, I'm David. Uh, you usually can see me uh, on Between the Rolls except when we have something special going. Uh, also, I'm in a couple of the shows. I'm in Calam the Calamity campaign, which Frank just mentioned on mm -hmm. Saturdays. Uh, so is our guest over here, Kevin. Uh, yeah, so I play Ingve in that. Uh, we have a Calamity B-side, I play Crow in that. And uh, yeah, a little show called Cacophony. I play Zadar, the arcane trickster changeling. So yeah. Um, yeah, and every once in a while you can catch me on a one shot. Uh, if you want to follow me, you can follow me at uh, D and Devious on Twitter under uh, Devious Games. So uh, that'll be me. So nicely and done. That's it in a nutshell. <laughs> nice, uh, Kevin. You are up next. Uh, tell us about yourself. Hi, I'm Kevin, and uh, as David said, I am also on the Calamity game. I play Tall, the mysterious new party member who is a paladin of some sort, and I also have my own podcast. I'm the host of the Game Night Heroes podcast, where we do story-driven RPG stuff. Um, got something coming up with David. We'll get that going in a little bit here, but um, yeah, we do uh, new episodes every Tuesday where we uh, just do little mini campaigns and ongoing stories cool stuff and uh, it's my first time here on between the roles which is going to be pretty fun and exciting but you can find me at kevran games on twitter instagram all those fun places and you can find game night heroes at game night heroes at the same places so thanks for having me here guys and what's the time kevin oh it comes out just on tuesday so it's whenever you want to get around to it it's, it's like, there for it, it's like amazon it's on demand. Yeah. So well, I don't, I don't know. If we want to say that, but <laughs> yeah, it is on demand. Yeah, it's, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Amazon esque. Sure. There we go. There we go. Sure. Nice, <laughs> nicely done. So that is live. There, are, your new episode is out today, correct? Because I know you were starting, or is that next week? It's uh, the episode this week is a little delayed. I had some editing stuff I'm working through, but it's going to be better than ever. Editing. I know editing Frank. <laughs> this is a concept that baffles Frank, but uh, <laughs> it's uh, yeah. So it's something that we are going to be uh, catching up on, and we got some great episodes. We're playing Lady Blackbird right now, which is like a cool steampunk. Uh, if you like Firefly, if you'd like uh, other cool stuff like that, you'll like it. Nice. I always took you for uh, what was his name, Captain Hot Pants, Captain Tight Pants. Oh yeah, Malcolm. Oh Reynolds. yeah, what was it? I, oh, I can't Nathan remember. Nathan Yeah, it was Captain. Ah, well, anyway, uh, <laughs> check out Game Night Heroes, folks. Uh, check out their old 
shows. They got old shows. Check that. Yeah, out. we've been around for a year, so yeah, we got all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So there you go, uh, folks. We're uh, we only had one game last week. Uh, we are going to start up the Margu campaign this weekend again, I believe. Also this Thursday we have Cred, the Cthulhu-based horror, and we'll see these two, Jesse and Rob, on Saturday for Calamity uh, as they wander through the streets of Yor or Mayo or wherever the hell they are. They're going into the government building. Should be fine. Did you see the Ukrainian images? Something like that, I'm sure. Frank promises us it's going to be very bloody and disgusting, and I cannot wait. So. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think Jesse can. I'm not. I, he's not a big <laughs> gore fan. Uh, so, David, uh, you played in Cacophony last week. Uh, go ahead and give us a brief overview on what that was like. Okay. I guess if we were going to title that, that episode, we'd call it what? Zadar and Camille face the music? <laughs> it's just like, yes. oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, so basically in that episode, after our time travel fiasco with screwing things up twice, you know, the second time that we went around, we finally said, screw it. We're just going to go back to the original timeline and deal with the consequences. Then it's like Frank said, you can't save everybody. So, but anyway, so we were. Ah, oh, that was an ordeal getting to that point to go back in our own timeline. Uh, we had to like circumvent ourselves. Uh, we had the event with the with the screamers uh, about the symposium on time travel. Well, that was actually getting set up, and a shitty dice roll made it storming outside. One of the poor screamers got hit by lightning. <laughs> Awesome. Oh, Sorry. <laughs> and they stuck it out. They stayed out there. They put the canopy down and they, they stuck out the whole thing. Uh, yeah. So basically we had to sneak into that and also uh, cast a sanctum so that we could hide into and look out uh, to see what's going on with ourselves and all that. Of course, uh, Hortense and Rock Stonejaw, I guess. Rock. Hard jaw. Hard jaw. Rock hard jaw. Uh, show up. And because they want to deal with our past selves, which are right outside the door. Uh, our future selves? Yeah. Future. I don't know. Is it future or past selves? I don't know. <laughs> You're muted, Frank. <laughs> Time travel is fun, right? <laughs> yeah. So anyway. Um, yeah. So we end up doing something s- completely stupid to what? to kidnap to kidnap Hortense oh, no. <laughs> cuz we need her to get her back to the timeline and it, it was kind of kind of sad she was she was pretty scared and tears ran down her eyes as we were trying to get this right and sure enough i had a high enough roll that we we came close to the point in time, so less rapey, more murdery. I think is the best way to flesh that one out. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. But anyway, we end up getting back, uh, and there we had to face the consequences. The witnesses, uh, yeah, Colonel Clank coming, and we didn't resist or anything like that. Try to run. We just resigned to our fate and just kind of went in. And turned out that. All along, that was the best play because the consequences suck because Zadar now has to. uh, Yeah, he has a he he has a condition now similar to what Mortimer has because he interacted with himself uh, in a different timeline. Yeah. (laughs) I just thought, hey, it'll be like Marvel's Loki. We can just have all our variants running around. Yeah, Frank doesn't play it like that. There's consequences. We are not millennials, dude. Uh, life does not end <laughs> nice with cupcakes and cookies, man. I'm going to put the screws to you. Nope, nope, nope. So we have, Zadar uh, has the risk of dementia setting, and he's dealing with uh, time sickness uh, as from now on until we can get to, where is it, Kang, I believe? Uh, it's uh, a lost city out in the desert. Uh, Mortimer is beat, is in an airship beating us to the punch, which we find out Mortimer is probably an unwitting bad guy in all this. So could be, or he, it could have been his plan, the end game all along. But anyway, 
uh, the race is on. Uh, Camille and Zadar uh, have to make a trek uh, to, uh, who is it, a Pasha or something like that that has a craft Correct. That's, that's able to carry us across the sands uh, swiftly. So, uh, so we got a journey just to get to that. So those are going to be the next episode. So going through the desert on a horse with no name. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking it and a chocobo. So I, yeah, you got oh, even better. <laughs> I, I'm thinking maybe a purple worm or expeditious snails is the magic craft. The, oh, okay, all right. Yeah, I still so kind of like the worms in Dune. They're just. Uh, or, uh, legendary inchworm was the big joke we had in my old group was an inchworm <laughs> literally an inchworm that could kill you so nice <laughs> nice i'm sure i won't kill them i'll kill their mounts bigger than shit i'll kill them that's, that's, right? yeah. that's why i haven't named it yet <laughs> so. as soon as you know it's it's like any movie i love you i think i want to be the... <laughs> <laughs> i know you frank so. you're a dumbass <laughs> so, yeah uh, cacophony is our soap opera and it is hilarious also you forgot you guys leveled up to nine we oh, did we leveled up to nine level zadar did something really cool with uh, his levels so yeah things are about to get really interesting so yeah I, nice. I i was looking at the uh cr rating for two ninth mm. levels <laughs> yeah i'm gonna kick the shit out of you guys We're gonna have it, yeah. <laughs> well, well it's good that zadar did what he did so i'll i'll let the cat out of the bag zadar took a level in uh another level in wizard and uh took blade singing as uh, oh, the subclass so love so it a rogue blade singer as well oh that's gross i love it <laughs> how is your trap finding ability good actually well, it better be <laughs> you're going in an old fucking pyramid so that could get messy <laughs> oh yeah uh, uh folks uh, uh I, I, we've had a lot of fun with screwing around with the timeline on that uh which is a perfect segue uh for our main topic timelines in a campaign uh if you ever <laughs> the producer is flipping me off because she hates screwing with he hates when time. I screw with the time <laughs> she hates that <laughs> Uh, the good news is, uh, when you're running a long, uh, when you have a long-running campaign, you should always try and keep track of time. Uh, it's important to do leveling up, training, traveling, things of that nature. We all know the old joke: oh, it takes five minutes to travel 500 miles, but it'll be an hour for combat, uh, which is less than a minute. Uh, but time is a very important factor, especially in a long-running campaign. And with that, you always want to pad the backstories, the lore aspects, with logical timelines. Uh, I found a nice generator online, which is excellent. Also, if you haven't followed uh, the tweets, uh, I've created a business generator. Check it out. I don't remember what the uh, website is. Eh, it's still a work in progress, but it's kind of cool. Anyway, four timelines. What we're going to do tonight is each one of us is going to roll. Well, I'll roll for these guys. Uh, unless you guys have your dice. If you want to roll, that's fine. Uh, it's up to you, man. If and you want to roll, go ahead. This. <laughs> so, essentially, we're going to take a time frame, whether ancient, historical, or recent times, and then I have a series of different items on here uh, that we'll roll for, or roll against, rather. And then we will all come up with stories, boom, on the fly, because that's, that, that's what Iron DM is all about. Uh, sticking it to the man. So which which one of you guys wants to go first? Uh, well, let's do it. I'll go first. Let's do it. Kevin, New guy's going to get punished. You got your go. dice? Do you want me to roll for you? You can go right ahead. Okay. I trust you and your dice. Three. We're Which going is... historical. So anywhere Ooh. from 20 to 100 years ago, uh, okay. there, there are 10 items. Okay. Seven, uh, an exploration or discovery of a new land. So 20 to 100 years ago, a new land was discovered. Tell us about it. All right. I think what might have happened, and this is in your established world, correct? Or is this is just general? Your Everybody, world, my world, whatever I want to do. Hawk, oh. Forgotten Realms, any world you want to use. Even it, cooler. I love it. I love it. I'm thinking what, what we had was a scenario where we've got different explorers who went to the edge of the known sea 
And one day they were sailing and what they found was an island that was not there before. This specific island, I think, when it emerged, had a certain type of look to it, a certain type of pull to it almost. Um, they soon found that people were getting drawn here from all the different areas. Maybe this island had some sort of purpose for drawing these people here. And I think maybe when they discover this island, a lot of the people who went there have not returned yet. And there's just this weird, almost unheard call that seems to draw more people there for an unknown purpose. Are the people alive? The people who are gone? Yeah. I think if we were to be on the island with them, they are still alive. I think perhaps that they are there. Um, maybe there's a presence there that's keeping them there. Maybe either some sort of mind control or maybe even a magical effect that doesn't let them leave. Perhaps there's a, a, a reason why it's drawing certain individuals to this island. Maybe certain types of classes or maybe certain types of ancestries are here for a reason. Maybe. Okay. Now, since we're dealing with historical timelines, mm -hmm. it is assumed that this story has gotten out. Definitely. I uh, think so. How so? Well, that's a good question. Um, that's why this is Iron DM. That's it. Well, <laughs> yeah. well, if everybody's still there, I think what we would have to have would be maybe there is a legend of a specific crew that for whatever reason, they could escape. Um, maybe they had a scenario where um, maybe it's up for that's part of the myth of it is people don't quite know why they could escape. Maybe it could be their captain had some sort of talisman that protected him or her. maybe it could be a scenario where they actually vanquished something that was stopping them from leaving and they could leave. Um, or maybe the island rejected them for some reason, but they got back warned people of the island, said, do not go to the island. Don't go there. Scary business. Perhaps maybe even one person came back, one survivor somehow. Um, but for some reason, that call is still pulling people there. Silent, dude. Sorry. Right I, I, there keep, I, I keep killing it off. Uh, so kind of like a narrator or a mermaid calls, calls them towards the island? Possibly. I mean, it could be. I think I think the the legends of what exactly is calling them would be um, varied at best. I think you probably have some people who, as all stories go, you'd have some people who would say, oh, it's a giant beast. You'd have some people say it's a storm. You'd have some people that say, yeah, there's sirens. Um, yeah, maybe there's all kinds of different various reasons. It's a volleyball named Wilson. That Th there we go. There we go. <laughs> uh, any bad guys on this island? Well, I think um, well, there's I think there's two ways to go about. It. We could do either the island itself, whatever's drawing them there, is a villainous force um, that's maybe drawing them there to perhaps. Um, the initial thought I could think would be if it's drawing them there to somehow use their life force to reemerge or to you know, feed its power so that it can maybe it's trapped on the island itself and it's going to use them to be able to finally leave if it manifests properly. Um, or uh, either in conjunction with or in opposition to that, you could have a group that's maybe there trying to, if it's a benevolent force, they could be trying to keep it contained, like they're trying to stop the people from coming to the island so that it doesn't get released. Or it could be they are a cult that somehow follows if it is a malicious entity or presence. They could maybe be trying to foster that and trying to bring people in and maybe that's part of why you can't leave is these let's say if we go with the seafaring thing these uh, pirates uh maybe they attack you destroy your ship they raid you whatever it might be and leave you know keep you there capture you i guess you could say david what you got any questions uh, uh same scenario uh pretty much or just kind of build upon. Well, what no, no. Kevin... It, 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 what do you got for Kevin? Any questions for him? Oh, any questions? Yeah, you'll get a different scenario. I hope. Okay. If the dice don't. Uh, 
No, no. I mean, I like everything that he says. I, when he's talking, I'm getting like flashes of like different movies with islands in them and forbidden islands and stuff. So, you know, one of the things that I was thinking, you know, like a prison island, like, uh, you know, like the movie with Ray Liotta, No Escape and all that. They're just <laughs> dumped there, you know. Uh, I was getting a something- lost vibe. Yeah, yeah, Lost. Yeah, the more I talked, I was like, this kind of sounds like Lost. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But that's a good movie with Ray Liotta. It's a good one. Um, uh, the other is when you were talking about an entity or something like that on the island. You know, I remember watching the movie The Immortals with Henry Cavill and all that. And when they go into the area and there's that Titan cube where all the Titans were like locked in place mm-hmm. and stuff like that, and that was the goal of the be- of hyperion's bow and all that was to release them and all that so i mean i can see something like that It'd be great for the island and something like that that something's imprisoned there or something you know that could be you know like a hidden uh i don't know like uh hazard on the island or something like that that's probably why it wasn't discovered you know it's just like whatever's trapped there was best left alone you know, so right. or something. And maybe perhaps that's why it maybe it was it was sunk on purpose. Maybe there was a cabal of mages that somehow nice. performed a ritual to sink it and now that something has happened to break their spell or maybe even reverse it somehow and that's why it's come back. Um maybe there's part of that group is maybe there's remnants of that group. Um like who yeah. let's uh let's say they, they found it we're saying 20 to 100 years ago let's say one of their descendants like their you know their grandchildren or whatever could perhaps be what the island is seeking it has to bring them back so that it can kill them or destroy them somehow to break the spell once and for all maybe that's how it can finally be released or vice versa yeah (laughs) so are you seeing campaign or just scenario I always, I always see campaign with <laughs> every time I try to put a game together. Unfortunately, but um, I think it, it depends on how you approach it. I think if you want to do it with it's a one shot or a short thing, you could do it where, um, you know, you start on the island. You start, you either you crash, you wake up, whatever it might be, and you just have to escape. And part of your escape, you defeat whatever it is. Or if you want to do a campaign, you could do the whole journey. You could hear, you know, your group is hearing the call and Maybe there's even a benefactor who might hire you to go retrieve somebody or something. Uh, maybe you go with that one person who got away and they have to go back for somebody or, um, you know, their, their wife was on the crew and she's still there or whatever it might be. And you have to go back with them and you could do the whole journey. You could do, depending on how far away you are, um, the whole. And then once you get there, of course, you can start embroiling and figuring out what the mystery is and defeating different various elements leading up to a God battle at the end. So like second level. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah second level. Totally. Level zero. Totally. Level zero the whole thing. Yeah. That's right. You either win this or you aren't fit to be an adventurer. That's, That's it. it. Uh, nice. That's I, it. I, I like that idea. A lot, lot of opportunities there, a lot of prospects. David, uh, you gonna roll dice or you want me to? Uh I'm gonna roll. What do you D six first? D six first? Okay. Two. Uh, ancient times, 500 Ooh. or more years ago. Give me a D12. Okay. okay. Well. Major discovery of a new territory, such as a continent or a planet, or do you want to re-roll? That, that's pretty similar to what Kevin did. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's go ahead and re-roll that one. Sure. <laughs> Boy, one extreme to the, to the other. One. <laughs> Rise of an empire. Okay. What's the empire? Right. Ancient and... times and rise of an empire. Okay. Uh, ooh. That's, that's a tough one. Uh, <laughs> well, what's the name uh, of the empire that you want to re- that allow to rise to historical ramifications? Uh, the Davian Empire. <clears throat> okay. Nice. That works. Love it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, with Emperor Dave. (laughs) Cool. 
Uh, what kind just of kidding. what 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 kind uh, of does this okay. Emperor Dave does he have bunny slippers on? I just want to make sure before we go any further. Yeah, uh, and it's okay. a, it right. is Dave. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> 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 oh man, I'm, I'm terrified of this empire already. <laughs> there you go. It's Dave. He survives calamity and all that. He becomes like Conan at the end of Conan. <laughs> <laughs> <You know>? Awesome. <laughs> wow. I, I can see him with the bear hoodie over. Yes. Just yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> long know. beard this time. <laughs> That's Right, Elves it. grow beards. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Bitching about Geb's cows still. Uh, <laughs> miss Geb's cows. Okay, uh, so what kind of landscape is this Davian Empire in? Are we talking tundra, forest, mountains? Um. Well, I mean, how 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 vast do we want that want this Davian Empire? I mean, hey, are we man, talking this, this us, like so. something the size of the Roman Empire, where it's going to vary? I, you, this is yours, pal, not mine. Screw it. Let's go Roman Empire, man. Okay. So, yeah. Multi we know what the fall is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, anything from, from coastal uh, uh, regions to uh, the interior and all that. Um, one of the things that would definitely have to uh, be done to tie the empire all together, of course, is roads and all that. So, so we would have to have uh, definitely some uh, what would be the ancient version of architects and engineers and stuff like that. You know, uh, of course, I mean, I, I hate harping on this, but I mean, as far as conquerors, no, we're going to pay everybody, a, you know, a sensible wage for their work. Now, of course, there's going to be slaves building the roads and things like that. So criminals. There we go. Criminals. Yeah, you, <laughs> They're criminals the working off their sentences. So well, that, that's, I mean, that's a very progressive standard. You should move to Arizona and become sheriff. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Joe, man. Joe, Joe can't do that job anymore. Yeah. <laughs> that's what happens when you get convicted. Uh, what, yeah. is it, what is it known for? Um, we're talking about Dave, so I don't think enlightenment. <laughs> <laughs> Dave's gonna thump your ass. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. He's always asking Ingve, Ingve, what does this word mean? You know. And so, um, <laughs> let's just say, uh, no, no, it, all about military might and stuff like that. Secure, a secure nation. So, so magic or just military might? Yeah, he's got friends. You know, in low places. <laughs> Yeah, Especially. that's it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so there would be there would be magic, you know, mages. Uh, there'll be you know a clergy and stuff like that. Of course, uh, a government. Oh man, it's just like I don't know. Like it could be a central figure like a Caesar with a Senate in a in a yeah with a Senate. So <laughs> he who wears the bunny slippers controls the crown. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Nice. Uh, so is it, is it his offspring? Cause the empire empire has to go several lineages. So yeah. Yeah. Were, were Caesars a, a bloodline or were they, I, I can't remember my ancient history as far as Caesars, how were they chosen? Some were uh, chosen. Some were bloodline. Uh, okay. The Flavian emperors, uh, were not chosen or they were chosen by essentially the Praetorian guard because if the Praetorians didn't like you they just fucking kill you <laughs> yeah that <laughs> okay so Dave-esque <laughs> yeah exactly that's right makes like, right my friend <laughs> that's perfect that's Dave you know how, so. how about trial by combat trial you by know. combat so. that's how he became Caesar <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, so. Kevin any any feedback on that one Oh, it's great stuff. Um, does this empire, do they have perhaps have uh, enemy empires? Do they have opposition to how far they can expand? Probably, probably. They'll run into, uh, there There was always op opposition. So, I mean, for expansion, I mean, of course, came from defeating any, any you know, uh, you know, external threats and stuff like that and then conquering their lands. Kind of like what's never mind. I'm not gonna bring it up. Wow. So, so does this does the Davian Empire do this? Um, are they 
are they like bloodthirsty about this? Do they go seeking to destroy other people? No, or are they doing no. it more like uh, reveling in the sportsmanship of combat and the, the joy of combat? Probably. Prob- probably it, it, it is your true empire like philosophy, security, and strength uh, through conquest. Oh, my so, thanks, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like, you know, peace will be established. Join the empire. That kind of thing. Join the Davian empire. You know, so. how about uh, if a ruler goes into trial by combat to maintain the crown uh, and he loses, does he automatically lose his life or sent to prison, sent to the gulag? Uh, rally his forces elsewhere and come back from Elba and take over France again. How's that? He becomes street sweepers. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) I'm trying to make this (laughs) Uh, to all of our uh, sanitation engineers out there and those that work with the street department. We apologize for Dave's rude comments. (laughs) And thank you for your hard work. Thank you for your your hard work. Thank you. Seriously, seriously. Seriously. I nice say, um, Dave, they're gonna they're gonna barricade your house. <laughs> it's it's too late, Dave. They, Frank they and I are cool. They already picked up the trash from from Friday, so they finally picked it up like yesterday. Maybe so, they knew. You know. They knew. They were just like that bastard's gonna sell us out. Watch, he's That's gonna it. disparage it's us a, somehow. It's a low bar to get worse than me. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, no, no, no. It's not so much that. Uh, I don't know. Uh, where they're mocked think... and people throw shit at them that'd be kind of cool yeah that would be cool the tomato uh... festival <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice uh, <clears throat> no uh, the defeated are kept as council oh interesting okay yeah. I'll see that. Learn, learn from the mistakes of the prior Caesar and stuff like that is there a restriction on I'm the king and you beat me Am I never to be king again? And that's how the council works. That's a good question. That is a good question. Let's just, let's just say, hey, that'll. I don't know. I don't know. Because I could I see mean, myself tanking you, just to get back. But if if I was restricted from never holding office again, yeah, right. yeah, I think it would be. Yeah, no, we're not doing it like we do <laughs> in modern politics. You're restricted from ever running again. That's so, a good idea. I like I like that yeah. idea. Yeah. Anything else on this one? No, that's it. Eventually, it would evolve into like a republic or something like that to where, you know, fair elections or something like that. But the elections are combat (laughs) driven and stuff like that. (laughs) Nice. Nice. So. Uh you're well i I won't go there (laughs) (laughs) exactly i'll I'll be kind tonight uh okay we'll go with me yeah that's two so i'm in ancient times as well yeah six exodus persecution of the population Mm. you know what I'll, i'll do it the same way we did it at murder hobocon with iron dm i'm gonna go ahead and maintain the thread so in the davian empire oh okay here we go here we go uh, there is a group of scholarly types that believe that the pen is mightier than the sword we will call them scribus uh and they uh are the learned uh the nerds essentially think revenge of the nerds uh and in the davian empire uh their um opportunity to help move the civilization along is kept at a lower level than those of the warrior class so scribus individuals are picked on bullied uh and have to join the trilams uh which is great the davian empire's high school that's right (laughs) right? (laughs) essentially exactly uh so and these guys are always getting hit with the (laughs) dodgeballs there you go so that that's the trial by combat it's dodgeball (laughs) that's right Uh, yeah i gotta write that down trial by combat is dodgeball awesome Uh, the good news is about the scribus is uh they're very imaginative maybe play some role-playing games uh and they're very well spoken which does not jive well with the Davian Empire. However, they are also the lawgivers. So that picked on kid in high school is now 
the cop that everybody hates. So yeah. as much as they hate the Scribus division, uh, they have to maintain a suitable distance or fear its wrath as they are also the lawmakers. Uh, so the Scribus can, with a majority, go ahead and change that, uh, change laws benefiting uh, one candidate over another. Maybe uh, in the dodgeball tournament, the current king has to use his offhand only. Uh, so, for as much as they are picked on, uh, the Scribus are mostly despised by the ruling elite, but they are a necessary evil in their eyes. Now, the general public has no problem with the Scribus because they know that the Scribus uh, take on the elite ruling class and as long as these two are going at it, everybody leaves the middle class alone. So the middle class has no problem with the Scribus, and because of the Scribus, they have Dave, Dave's roads, row ads, uh, really? and they come along with certain reliquary items, artifacts, magical items. Uh, so these are your first edition wizards, low in hit points, low in strength. If they get high enough, they are going to beat your ass like a drum uh so the scribus population in the davian empire is my uh persecuted group they are not going to exodus there's no leaving these guys are in it for the long haul because they know when everybody grows up they're going to have the money and the power uh and that, <laughs> that is their main mantra uh, they're in for the long it. game yeah they, that's they're it long the game long players game. so uh, questions about Scribus. Uh, Scribus. Okay. Um, are, are there going to be like, uh, okay, what is going to be the doctrine for the Scribus or whatever? Uh, knowledge is power. Okay. All right. And anybody, uh, an idiot is considered a heretic or something like that? Is there inquisitors <laughs> or something like that? You failed the pop quiz? You, you know? <laughs> they do not possess that much power where they can hold the inquisition because nobody would ever see that coming. <laughs> but nice. you know what? Now that you mention it, maybe that is the fall of the Davian Empire. Ooh. The Scribus decide they're going to hold an inquisition and start whacking off royals and pretty soon the scribus rewrite the laws take power everybody becomes uh, smarter they uh, work smarter not harder uh, everybody uh, is well educated so they create social media and then they that is their downfall for scribus is yeah it social media because it all gets dumb again yeah yes <laughs> i don't know what that's like idiocracy again it's like <laughs> all, all the cell coverage dies and no i don't know how to get home uh, yeah right. so, <laughs> exactly so I'll, I'll go with that they are also the downfall of the davian empire i like that Interesting. okay i like okay. it i like uh, it anything else uh uh, now, because they, they're not ruled by the challenge of combat to rule over their little group. Are they more democratic, more equal? They take or tests. They... <laughs> I, I was going to say, they pop, that's the that's their inquisition. You failed the uh, college, I mean, the, the the prep quiz bowl competition or whatever, you know. That's it. Like, quiz that, busters. That's how things are just decided. Yes. I'll say there's a membership of 12 as a ruling body. Uh, and it, just like the old monks in 1st, 2nd edition, if you want to have a seat on the Scribus uh, Council, you have to go head-to-head -head with somebody else. So if you were the, I forget what it was, like Master of Flowers or something like that, in order to get to that next level, you had to find the current Master of Flowers holder, defeat them in combat, and then take their place. So oh, wow. same thing here is, you know, you got to go to the quiz bowl and uh, or you have to win at Jeopardy, essentially. Right. Uh, Pretty much, and, yeah. and, <laughs> and if you can defeat your opponent once once per year is a challenge, uh, if you can defeat your opponent, you may take their seat on the council and hold it for one year. Uh, and now, okay. so if somebody else wants to come on, they can't just immediately pick you. They have right. to pick one of the others because your seat is guaranteed for at least a year. Is it Ram like Jeopardy where there's a weekly champion or whatever and just to see how long you can get? <laughs> there, There's 12 seats, so once a month there is a challenge. 
Nice. But you can only challenge the person who has been there for 12 months. So, it, you know, okay. it can't go off on a random. Now, if somebody dies, that will upset the balance uh, of power uh, to a certain degree. So if I die in the 11th month and Kevin defeats the stakeholder of the 12th month, there's going to be a position that will need filled. So, okay. okay. But there is term limits. There are term limits of, I'll say, five years. Okay. All right. Because term limits are the right thing to do. Exactly. <laughs> Other questions? Uh, I don't know. No, that's, no. That's, I, that's I cool. really like the way the Davian Empire is shaping up. <laughs> well, and if, if you didn't get to see Murder Hobo Con, Iron DM, uh, the four or five of us that were working just kept meshing shit together, and it was it was fun. Awesome. It was pretty fun. So, uh, Kevin, back to you. Oh, okay. D6. You too are in ancient times. Oh, here we go. Four. The fall of a god or the end of a religion. Oh, no. Ooh, okay. Okay. That's um, a going. Interesting. Um, well, let's see here. Um, I think no, and this is this is all complete can be its own thing, right? There we're, we're yep. building here. Yeah, it's it's okay. entirely up to you. I see. Okay. Let's say then that in this ancient <clears throat> empire that there was a specific um they, there was only one religion, you know, it's monotheistic. There was only the one specific way that you do everything. And the the piety of the people led to a scenario where as they continue to be more powerful, showing more faith, their deity actually was able to um, be fully realized, fully seen by them. But the material world the mortal world as you want to call it is a different place than deities are meant to walk to travel or whatever um so when they actually came the uh these beings these people i should say that were in this religion actually couldn't quite handle the presence of their deity actually physically there with them and because of this they actually um the the deity chose them to not be worthy enough to carry on their purpose, carry on their faith because they just weren't strong enough to, they to rise up. Losers. Losers. <laughs> <Losers. laughs> um, you know, we're back in high school and, uh, <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, so they actually all the, the, the faithful in this specific religion, even though they had physical proof that their deity was there, um, their deity spoke to them, their deity judged them. They turned away, decided to not, quote unquote, waste their faith on that specific deity any longer because the deity turned their back on them. So they're turning their back as well. So it wasn't necessarily a fall of a god where the god actually fell. It's more of just the religion itself fell away from prominence because they felt they had wasted their lives following a goal that once it was achieved, it wasn't the goal they thought it was. I, I'm seeing uh, Tom Hanks and Forrest Gump out in the middle of the desert. He's like, I'm going to go home. I think I'm going to go home. I'm real tired. <laughs> so they, they met their hero and were disappointed with it. Right. Yeah. It's um, the whole don't meet your heroes. Uh, you yeah. you get there and you know you meet somebody in real life and that this this. The expectation, the hype was bigger than the actual movie. You know, you waited for episode one to come out and then you saw it. And you were like, oh, shit. And, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, and like, so then you got to take a step back. 14 years for this. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> this is not what I thought it was. Oh, did, did God just fart? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. It was Taco it Tuesday at the temple. <laughs> uh, what's your deity's name? Oh, um, let's say the, um, it's tall. <laughs> oh, there we go. We're going to keep it in the family here. <laughs> we'll say this deity is called, um, the, um, oh, geez. I don't know. The, uh, Millie oh man, what, a... <laughs> <laughs> what, 
What a hard, what a hard thing to come up with. Um, <laughs> that's why it's Iron you, DM, baby. You can always come up with a name for a deity that's going to be like a part of the game, you know, part of the religion, you know, part of it going to be, you know, your cleric's going to call the name out and they're in battle. But to actually come up with a deity who people don't really give a crap about anymore, that's interesting. Uh, <laughs> the god, uh, meh. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's Steve. It. Nah. Steve, exactly. <laughs> right. Oh, man. Okay. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, is there any recourse for the deity, or does he just wander off? And I think specifically, he just honestly, he or she, it, um, just honestly just leaves. They pretty much shows up, says, you guys are a bunch of fools. Go home. It's over. What's wrong with you? Leave the theater. Get out of here. <laughs> Get out of yeah. here. Go home. It's Ferris yeah. Bueller. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and then literally just turned its back and just left. And so the the, uh, the group was just had no recourse but to just maybe it was anger. Maybe it was disappointment. Maybe it was just they were heartbroken. They just... They had to turn away themselves. There was no recourse to them. And any sort of other calls that they would make out towards their deity just went un, unabated. So he put him in timeout. That's it. <laughs> David, got any questions for him? Uh, no, man, he covered that, that well. But I, I like the God's name being Meh. Meh. <laughs> Meh. <laughs> what was the, I saw a meme the other day, and it was something about the Greek God. Uh Mediocrities. Yeah. <laughs> mediocrities. mediocrities. There we go. Yeah. This is the god mediocrities. Uh, That's it. Nice. Okay, David, it's time for you to roll. Oh, okay. What am I rolling? D6 Six to start. start. Okay. Uh, five. Oh. Ooh. Recent time within the last 20 years. Give me a D10. Okay. Oh, D10. Sorry. I was like, oh, D12. We're mixing it up, folks. Yeah. Uh, seven. Founding of a secret society Ooh. within the last twenty years. Oh, let's let's keep it. The nerds are in charge. Yeah, <laughs> the secret society is an Illuminati. Nice, awesome. So, do and they it, follow, and do they follow written, man? <laughs> they follow man. <laughs> They've written down the teachings of. Well, they tried to write it. Down or, or they proved just... that that meth was not that great, or whatever. <laughs> so. As you can see oh. here, the hypotenuse doesn't match the right angle. <laughs> exactly. Oh man. Uh, what's the secret society called? Uh, uh let's see. Uh, mm-mm-mm. See, we put the screws to our panelists, boys and girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, In the hot trying seat. To think. Uh, what is uh, a Latin term for enlightened or something like that? Probably Illuminati. Yeah, that's it. Uh, no, probably... Um, you weak-ass bastard. The, no, 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 no. no. Um, probably, I don't know, I'm trying to think of something that's kind of in the vein of Illuminati, but uh, as far as the name, but I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to think. Well, oh, D and D has societies like that too, and I just can't can't think of them for inspiration. Illuminari um, is the Illuminari. In line. Okay. Illustratio. Uh, th- oh, you could do uh, you your ID E U E R U D I T E. That means scholarly. Okay. There you go. Okay. Remember, folks at home, it's Leviosa, not Leviosa. Uh, Leviosa. <laughs> I hated her that whole movie just because of that. <laughs> okay, so tell us uh, what the your 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 Adati. Yeah, let's make it as difficult to say whatever, so you're not really sure whether or not it exists. Secret just, society, just like That's the best. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. They're sh- they're governing uh, information and knowledge and stuff like that. So they have like a secret society of like, uh, I want to say, uh, like they have underlings or whatever that go out and gather knowledge and keep an eye on like people that are like pioneering or whatever as far as like knowledge and science or arcane sciences and stuff like that so So they're the cia they're the cia 
pretty much. Spy network, nice. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. They're 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 the people that decide what knowledge is safe and what should you know. They're looking for things that you wish you could unlearn is pretty much it. So they're they're trying to keep Pandora's box closed. <laughs> That's okay. basically what they're doing. Do they have anybody on the uh, Scribus Council? Uh they like uh like core members or yeah, I I keep thinking that you know like kind of like the Star Chamber, you know, five members or whatever, you know, almost like justices or something like that. But they're 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 the scholars. They're masked. Nobody knows who they are. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's a nice touch right there. I like that. Uh, what's what's the name of their leader? Uh, uh the Grand the Plume. The Grand Plume. The erudite. Oh. I, I like the erudite. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Grand Plume. So his, his oh, you're going has... with Grand Plume. I like the erudite. Oh yeah. <laughs> what what'd you, you say? No, I no, said no. the erudite. Yeah. Oh okay. Yeah. I, but but let's make it nonsensical. Let's call it the Grand Plume. We're we're going for the French. erudited Grand Plume. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay. He 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 wears a mask, but he has the biggest hat <laughs> with a big plume, as one does. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. That shows yeah. that he's the leader. Uh, yeah. Right. Uh, so our, what I'm curious about is if they control. You were saying that they were looking for the knowledge and determining what knowledge was the right kind of knowledge. Um, if they're able to have sort of a intellectual monopoly over what is or is not the answer, so to speak, um, why are they still a secret society? Why haven't they completely infiltrated everything or have they? They have. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> they did. They infiltrated everything. So nice. it's, it's, I mean, it's, probably not as diabolical as it seems but but you know i mean but to keep things secret i mean shit has to die you know and you know there's causes and things like that um hmm i'm trying to think uh how to make it um i mean in addition to the this core council and stuff like that let's just say there's like black sites or something like that, where this knowledge and science are tested and stuff like that. These theories are tested and that's how they determine, you know, what's safe, what's not. Nice. And this is in, this is in New Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> <that's it. laughs> or here <laughs> in Tennessee. Right. In Tennessee, that's right. Yeah. Uh, so if, if they always wear masks, do they, the others know who they are is there like a secret handshake or it's probably like a secret handshake or something like that or like some kind of rune or something like that you know uh almost kind of like a mark that they since it's arcane sciences that they can leave or whatever like that or that they see or you know kind of like the 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 tattoo or whatever that's only able to be seen under uv light or something oh, like cool. that you know so they go to raves <laughs> yeah that's it they show up i do all my best thinking so. yeah, nice uh, i like it because of its calm serene nature yeah <laughs> uh any other questions for david in the secret society of illuminati or erudite 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 um anything anything anybody no i like it it's secret so you know. it's a secret yeah we, we probably said too much already to that's right yeah we'll probably be exactly. taken off the air <laughs> that's it <laughs> okay last one then five recent events and that's a d10 okay. uh six or nine uh six or nine nine discovery of the lost room i think it's six death of a noble Ooh, uh, okay okay that's way more fun uh Make it an oligarch. I, I'm going to make it Baroness <laughs> Roberta Tarsalov. Okay. Uh, and unbeknownst to the people of her barony, she was actually a dragon. But nobody yes. realized it. Uh, not dragonborn. 
fucking full on dragon. Okay. Uh, and when she died, she reverted back to her dragon Ooh. form. Oh, okay. uh, she was a uh, odd chromatic, even metallic, even uh, gold, silver, copper, bronze. I go brass. With brass. Or if you want to throw gems in there, just to really spice things up. I'll, I'll go gem on six. Okay. Two, uh, gold, silver. She was a silver dragon. Uh, awesome. And she was known for her exceptionally long lifespan. So she was like Baba Yaga. Uh, she was very old when she died. Uh, and you know what? Odd natural causes even uh, assassinated. Even, even, even. Four, even. Uh, she was assassinated. Odd, poisoned, even, shot down. Three, odd, she was poisoned. Uh, mm. She was very well liked among her people because, of course, as a silver dragon, she was very just ruler. Uh, she was poisoned by, I'm going to say the king. No, I'm going to say the queen. Uh, because <laughs> she was believed to be uh, falutine or consorting with the king, Hiram. Hiram Goldman. It, ha it would have to be an extremely rare poison or extremely toxic poison to take out a dragon. I, I would agree. You know what? Maybe, now it, it says death of a noble, so I, I was going to go, maybe she was delirious. Uh, so yes, she was believed to be convoluting with King Hiram Goldman, the Queen Miranda Escobedo, for all you long You love that name. To, oh, man. Uh, You've used it before. Right? <laughs> you know, that, that is the problem with being a former police officer. You always go back to what you know. So Miranda Escobito. There we uh, go. <laughs> uh, you guys can look up both of those uh, landmark cases. Uh, she decided to poison Baroness uh, Roberta Tosilov, uh with a rare poison found by, uh, you know what, members of the... Uh, you're you're a how do you Uridites or whatever. Uridites. Uh, yeah, awesome. She spoke with them via secret messages and hand signals uh, mm -hmm. to achieve that goal, and was able to go ahead and get this rare concoction made by. Uh, uh, it had a secret ingredient that was on a recently discovered island out in the sea. Nice. Uh, and fortunately, one individual survived, made it out, and told this horrific story uh, that Queen Miranda Escobedo totally blew off because nobody gives a shit about some dumbass island in the middle of the sea. <laughs> uh and somehow uh, she prayed to this monotheistic guy, uh, the god of meh, and uh, was able to go ahead and get his holy countenance in on it as he overlooked the alchemist's work uh, and then just said, I, I don't care what you do, because it'll work. Uh, the queen, Escobedo, then delivered it to the baroness in a uh, odd wine even ale for a barrel of ale because Roberta Tosilov loves her vodka ale. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, and having consumed too much of it in her advanced state of age as a dragon and as a polymorphed human, uh, she succumbed uh, odd, a horrible death, even a peaceful one. Three, odd, uh, a horrific death where she bubbled out uh, various bile and spit up silver uh, scales because she was a silver dragon. Upon death, odd, she crushed a foot person or even she just died by herself. Five, odd, she crushed her servant at arms. Uh, oh. uh, Stav oh. Stavetta. Stavetta. There we go. Stavetta, the lady in waiting, succumbed when the polymorph changed and the dragon crushed her. Uh, 
kind of humorous, kind of dumbassery. But <laughs> questions. Oh, um. Goodness. Yeah, I was a little leery about the poison, but I like how you made it extremely rare and stuff like that. So that from was... a disappearing island with the god yeah. of meh's help. <laughs> god of meh. See, we just so, tried to come full circle. That's yeah. It. So, who was her assassin? Uh, I mean, Queen was Miranda it, Escobedo delivered the her, cask herself, of or, herself, huh? or, vodka or ale. Okay. Right. Herself Stoli, or ale. Yeah. Well, okay. uh, the Baroness drank it willingly because she was a uh, noted lush. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> She liked her vodka ale because it reminded her of her homeland in the, I think it's called the Silver Mountain Range. I think it's called Silver Mountains in Socium. Uh, so that's where she would have originated from. So nice. I, I think I hijacked Jeff's. Uh, Jeff, there's your Tied dragon. Together, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> we go full circle here and just tie full up the circle. Uh, any other questions about the death of Baroness Roberta Tosilov? No. So no, how no. does she. Oh, go ahead. Go. Go ahead, Kip. Oh, I was just so how how does she factor into what happens next? Is she a big enough noble that her death actually has repercussions for the queen, or is it just something that she dealt with and her supposed uh, the supposed king's uh, mistress is just taking care of? It's over. It's done with. I will say that the people are quite upset, whereas they had nothing but admiration for uh, Baroness Tosilov. The fact that she was hiding her true form all of these years is a slap in the face of uh, the justice and truthfulness that she spent so long in fostering. So they feel betrayed. There will be no repercussions. Uh, Queen Miranda Escobedo will sit on the throne uh, with her husband wondering, mm, I'll stick with wine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, nice. That's right. <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> <laughs> any other questions no no that was good stuff no that's good stuff this yeah. is all good stuff yeah. tonight Th this okay. is iron dm boys and girls uh if you can't find an idea with us uh find one on your own uh but if you ever need our help all three of us will be more than happy as uh will most of our almost I'll, I'll say it, all of the cast of Murder Hobo Inc. will be more than happy to help you out with any questions you have, uh, whether they be mundane or specific. Um, so follow us on Twitter. Or, I, I'm sorry, final thoughts. It's been a while since uh, I've done this. David, final thoughts. No, no. Uh, Iron DM is great, and chances are you're going to see some of this stuff coming up in a one shot or I something like that. Love it. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Love I, it. I guarantee it. Uh, Kevin, final thoughts? Oh, yeah, this was great. Good stuff. I uh, Yeah, I like how it was all kind of simmering and all coming together like jello coming together at the end. That was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this was good. This, I didn't know quite what to expect, and this was a good time. Oh, good. Very cool. Yeah. We're glad Thank to be uh, Welcome back anytime. Uh, don't oh, forget, awesome, yeah. plug your uh, podcast for us. Yeah, Game Night Heroes. Yeah, we come out we're on, on all the different major streaming things. You can find us everywhere, um, GameNightHeroes.com as well. And uh, you can find me at Kevran Games. There you go. And on Calamity. On Calamity this Saturday. <laughs> That's uh, right. <laughs> folks, follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot the shit about D&D, join the Discord. Uh, if you want to be on the show, mhobo Inc., Twitter or Gmail. If you want cool dice at Pirate Dog Dice on Twitter. If you want to, to make your game smell a whole lot better than it does, because it probably stinks, because we're so awesome, uh, oddfishgames.com, uh, Adventure Sense, also the Shine System, if you want to learn how to write. Uh, Wednesday, or I'm sorry, Thursday is Cred, so you Cthulhu fans rejoice. Kyle best to have his ass in the seat this time. Uh, and then Saturday, these two, Rob, Jesse, and I will be uh, throwing a little bit of calamity right down your throats, whether you want to or not. For all of us here at Murder Hobo Inc., thanks for joining us. We hope you have a great rest of the night. Go tune into the State of the Union address if you want. Uh, let's give him a big kiss and wave and get the hell out of here. Mwah. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Awesome stuff. <laughs>